Lecture 1.6 coming at you. Here we go. This lecture is about elements, compounds, mixtures. It is the about how we actually break down the definitions of three of them using models. Since we really can't see these on the atomic scale, often you will use or you will see questions dealing with the terms elements, compounds, mixtures dealt with in a model form. In class I was using bolts and I was using uh, washers and nuts and putting them together to help us figure out the basic classifying uh, vocab that's part of this course. In any case, today we also worked with the very basic uh, fundamental properties of chemical versus uh, physical property and I want to spend some time on that as well. Um, uh, so let's take a step back for those that maybe didn't follow today as well. So a real quick way to do that is that we have our physical property and we have our chemical properties. Essentially that covers all properties of matter. Okay, so we're a line right down the middle there. Okay, now chemical properties deal with making a new substance or the or the ability or lack of to make a new substance. So this is about making a new substance or a new chemical arrangement, I should say. Okay, probably a better word. For instance, if I have um, propane today we had in bubbles, C3H8, it reacted with the oxygen and it made CO2 and water. Uh, put the water over here. Okay, so though, so you notice the propane became CO2. The H's from the propane combined with the oxygen to make water and the carbon in the propane combined with the oxygen in the air to make CO2. This is called combustion. But the bottom line here is that chemical formulas were changing and new substance was being produced. This is chemical. Okay. Now physical changes, okay, these changes deal with not affecting the chemical formula. For instance, if I take coal, which is mostly carbon, and I crush it from a, uh, big blocks into a powder, it's still carbon, solid. You didn't break up the atoms or crush the atoms. You just made big pieces going into smaller pieces. So you didn't change the chemical structure, so it's physical. In our lab of density of solids, our first lab, what we did was we identified compounds based on their density. When we measured the density of a metal, we did not, in fact, change its structure to do so. If I was trying to measure the combustibility or the flammability of propane, well, if it does undergo, uh, if there is a positive test for that, it would definitely undergo uh, a change and we couldn't go back. Okay, so physical changes, you're not changing the chemical structure. The biggest one people tend to forget is that, uh, and I said this today over and over a little bit, is that, um, and it's very important to understand that, is phase changes. Now you may not know what the word phase changes is. The phases that we have are solids to liquid to gases. And we go from adding energy, we go from a solid who has lowest energy to liquids who have an intermediate and gases who have the greatest amount of energy. And of course gases and solids of course will melt into a liquid and liquids will evaporate or boil into a gases. But gases could condense into a liquid and liquids can freeze into a solid. All these changes are physical because the chemical formula does not change. Take, for instance, ice is H2O solid. I mean, so Mr. Grodsky, that solid is different. Well, when you heat it, it becomes H2O liquid. And of course, heat it some more, it becomes H2O gas. Chemical formulas are not changing. Phase changes, melting points, freezing points, condensation points, all these phases of matter of changing do not change the chemical formula. They're changing something else we'll talk more about, and those are the attractions between the actual molecules. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. Now, there's basic two types of physical properties. There's, in there's uh, intensive physical and extensive physical. Okay, and let's write these down. Extensive physical, okay, is based on the size of the sample. So extensive physical 
is not used for identification. Examples, mass, the, how much mass something has or how much it weighs, its weight, although there are differences between mass and weight, I'm using them one and the same. Mass and weight, you can't identify something by its mass alone. If I said I have two metals under box A and box B and one is 10 grams and one is 5 grams, you couldn't tell me with any confidence which one, let's say, was gold and which one was silver. You could not. You, can't, you cannot identify based on mass alone. You can identify based on volume alone. It's another example of an extensive physical property. Okay. Now, intensive physical property, I'll just write intensive physical property. And I go I for I here. The I is for identification. So intensive is used for identification. These are all the other physical properties. Density, okay, you can use for identification. Hello, lab one. Okay, imagine that. It kind of goes together with what I'm teaching. Density, uh, also color, okay, odor, all the ones that we were working with in today's worksheet, which, by the way, I have a key on the share drive now, okay? So all of these things, density, color, odor, melting point, boiling points, and we even talked about today how we actually separate crude oil based on um, these intensive physical properties. Case in point, crude oil. All right, and I want to, uh, let's see here, can I go to the next page? No, it's the same page. So if I go to crude oil, and let's think about crude oil up here. Crude oil is a mixture of all kinds of different types of liquids. Uh, there's there's um, propane, butane, there's probably some gases that come out of it, methane, there's gasolines, kerosenes, there's lubes, oil, the tar that goes on your um, uh, plastics is all different types of compounds that come out of crude oil. Crude oil, of course, is what we get out of the ground. We process it. We use a refinery. And through refinery, we separate this mixture. And we learn that separating a mixture means that we're basing it on its individual properties. So if you're in a mixture and you're not bonded, you retain your individual properties. And we use fractional distillation. What we do is we take the uh, crude oil, we put it in this vat, we heat it. Now, I can't draw all of it, but we have this very, very, very tall structure. At different points, it has um, uh, places for the uh, liquid that condenses to come out. And we heat it, we boil off the compounds, and as they go up, different places have different temperatures at which the crude oil cools. So let's just pretend at 300 uh, Celsius, that's where this cooling part occurs, and we have, let's say, gasoline coming off here. And let's just say at uh, uh, 200, and I'm making this up, of course, 200 degrees Celsius, because the higher you go, of course, the cooler it gets, and these liquids condense at different temperatures because each individual compound that's in the mixture retains its individual properties. It's very important you understand this. And we're using something called fractional distillation. We are separating based on the individual, I'm running out of space, distillation, okay? And if, this could be diesel fuel or it could be kerosene, Okay, all the byproducts of crude oil. And, and that's how we refine gasoline. We do that in this country. We take the crude oil. But we're using the very basics that we learn, separating a mixture made of other compounds. The compounds retain their properties in the mixture. Okay, now, those are the basics that we talked about today. Let's clean that up. Okay, I'm going to get rid of all of this. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Very good. Now, we're going to use some models to start defining some of these things. Now, we learned to, earlier on or through the lecture or through working today that an, uh, an element, okay, is nothing more than a group of the same atoms. And we know that atoms are unique by their proton number, which we call atomic number. All right. So there's your element. And we know that a compound... I'll write that down here, is about what? A group, another group, but this particle is not an atom. It's a group of the same molecules.
okay, much different. So the unit, the piece of the unit that repeats over and over again, a compound that's the same, all right, is of course the molecule. Of course, molecules, for instance, water molecules are made up of one O and one H, and just showing the bonds here. Okay, and these, of course, eventually are broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. But it's the molecule that has the unique properties of the compound. So the smallest quantity of a compound that retains the properties of a compound is, of course, the molecule. Okay, now moving on. If we know that elements of the groups are the group of the same type of atoms, we know that, well, there's one type of atom. We're going to use circles as a model. And there's another type, so the black circles all represent one type. So there's a group of one type of element. And that means that we have element A, let's say, is dark. And there's another element here, here and here. So we have a group of two different atoms. Now we know they're similar by proton number, but we're going to use the shapes as models to reflect that. So we're going to put our work in here. And he, uh, oops, let's put this up here. And let's continue, put this in. Um, this would be A is a mixture, because these aren't bonded, right, of two different atoms. Okay, so I'm um, saying so two different elements. Okay, so that's why A goes here. B is the same atoms. Now we're using triangles to show that they're different from circles. We know that they differ by proton number or atomic number, but this is a group of the same type of shapes, same types of atoms. So this is clearly an element, because an element is a group of the same type of atoms, and you get the idea. Here, these uh, peculiar shaped things um, uh, look like two different atoms bonded together, and that, of course, is a compound. And here I have different atoms and different molecules, so it's a mixture of compounds and elements, D, and four, Oops, sorry. Uh, mixture of compounds would be E, because E is made up of, here's one compound, is a group of the same type of molecules. So there's, a, there's compound A, if you want to say. And, and here is compound B. Okay, just trying to keep these guys together. Here's compound B, and then compound A. So that's the mixture. All right, let's go back to my blue and kind of... All right, so back to blue, and there it is. So continuing on, which of the boxes on the left, there may be more than one, contain only atoms, no molecules. That's free atoms, unbonded. So look at A. Those are atoms. B are atoms. They're free. They're not bonded. They're not linked together. And so it looks like A and B. No problems. And number seven, only molecules, no separate atoms. So who are bonded together, but only molecules, okay? Which they really could have said only a compound, okay? So there is definitely only molecules. However, probably couldn't have said that because E is also molecules. This is a mixture of two different compounds, okay? Hetero probably. So I would say C and E. Both atoms and molecules. That's only one. That's a D. Again, the molecules are bonded together. Two different atoms chemically bonded, and the atoms are free. And of course, who's ho uh, who? I don't know why it keeps doing that. But um, last but not least, who's heterogeneous? That's A. Different type of atoms mixed. B, of course, is not. Who else? C is a compound, so we know B and C are, are definitely pure substances. Substances is, is either what? A pure element or a pure compound. So that's not it. And uh, D is heterogeneous, and so is E. They're made up of what? They're made up of two or more different things in close proximity, mixed together. So, and remember, heterogeneous matter could just be written as what? Mixture. So the only thing that are mixtures that are not mixed evenly, D and E, and I, my short-term memory is failing me, A. So A, D, and E. And last but least, the homogeneous matter, well, heck, 
that could either be a homogeneous solution, which you can't really draw here. So we either have element, which by the way is a substance, and a compound, which is your other substance. So who's an element of the compound? Well, B is your element, and C is your compound, so BC. And that completes the ditto, and that's what I wanted to go over today. Hope that really helped. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.